Once again, welcome to another live broadcast. My name is Isaiah Phillips Akintola. I want to bless the Lord for another glorious moment he's granted unto us to gather before him, to share his heart, to look into his mind, to look into his intention for this glorious day. Well, this morning, once again, I would like us to look into God's word as we continue to track, amen, the principles of the rising kingdom and, of course, the coming kingdom of heaven. This is a period in time where we need to continually, amen, allow ourselves to learn afresh, even of the things the Spirit of God has already revealed in the Word of God. We have to develop a new sense of spiritual connectivity to the things of the Spirit based on the nature of the days that we live in. The days that we live in requires and demand that we become students of God's word, that we understand what the Spirit of God has declared, has prophesied, and has proclaimed, particularly through the mouth of his prophets, so that we are not amen, shaken, we are not moved, we are not carried away, we are not led astray regarding the nature of the days that we have been ushered into. So I want to welcome you this morning. If you're joining us, wherever you are joining from, wherever you'll be connecting from, right? Uh, whatever the time zone, some of us may be connecting in the morning from here in South Africa, while some, all right, across the board will be connecting to us in the afternoon, or some are getting ready even to go to bed. But we want to appreciate the fact that this, uh, uh, this glorious day, you are able to connect with us. The Spirit of God is speaking to us expressly. Of course, like we have always said, this is a hub where we share the heart of God, the mind of God. This is a place where God's prophetic intention is revealed. This this is a place where we you know help each other to understand what the spirit of god amen is emphasizing to the church to the body of christ this is a place where we pray for each other we we stand with each other in the place amen of god's word and so once again i believe that as we gather and as we connect our our hearts and our you know our, our spiritual resource together that we'll be able to fully understand at least for that which the spirit of god is emphasizing in this glorious day that we will understand what the lord amen is saying to us what the spirit of god is requiring of us there are things the lord is harvesting from our life there are things the lord is depositing in our life the last time we you know we gather we we, we spoke about the dispensation I, I i i kind of like the way we dealt with the concept of dispensation which i think is something that is very very important and critical in our spiritual understanding all right dispensation has been you know dealt with from the position of you know uh, you know tradition and most time even from the position of theology but the, the way we look at the word dispensation the last time i think it gives us a kind of a better understanding that dispensation is a time where certain things all right are being released are being given to us it's not just a time frame in history it's not just a period in history what happened in that period in time is what matters okay each dispensation speaks of what the spirit of god is emphasizing to his church speaks to what the lord will have his church to know because the dispensation speaks to us the development of the church into that point into that place amen that is called the end of time or the end of the age okay the end of the age but also the end of time the scripture says well we're gonna in fact we're gonna look at that scripture quickly thank you lord we're gonna look at that scripture uh, uh in uh luke let's let's start with the one in luke and then I'm, i want to also go back to some basics again this morning hopefully that will give us you know you know better insight and understanding to all right where we are we are still laying the foundation all right of what the message of the kingdom is because the message that we preach if you look into the book of revelation the bible talk about you know the message of the three angels those those message captures amen the, the 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 process of god's redemption to the point of you know the finality of all things if you will the restoration of all things the restoration of all things is the last gospel all right and that is the message where christ amen is crowned again he becomes the lord of lord and the and the all in all amen to our life that's the final thing when death is finally you know conquered itself amen where everything is returned back to the father all right but before everything gets to be returned to the father amen we have to understand what is defined what is proclaimed as the message of the kingdom and i quickly want to kind of bring our mind back to one or two things again all right and then uh, uh we will proceed from there in luke chapter you know in luke chapter 21 all right luke chapter 21 in uh verse 10 the bible says then he was saying to them nations will rise against nation 
and kingdom against kingdom. There will be both great earthquake and famines and pestilence in different places. There will also be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. I want us to look at those signs. Those signs amen, are in the context of, of the coming of the kingdom of God. All right. Before, before we understand the kingdom of God, we, we spoke the last time that we also need to understand the general concepts of kingdoms. And I would like us to also look at that because I don't want us to just, you know, zero just on the kingdom of God without understanding the context, all right, of, you know, kingdoms. If, if we understand kingdoms and how they operate and what it means to live within the within kingdoms, then it's easy for us. One of the reasons I discovered that one of the reasons why many people today do not subscribe to the values of God, to the ways of God, to the principles of God, to the standard of God is because we do not have what is called a kingdom perspective we don't we are not oriented all right regarding the ways of kingdom so let me take that scripture again luke chapter luke chapter 21 verse 10 then he then he then then he, you know saying to them he, jesus was saying to them nation nation will rise against nation and we're already seeing that of course we also understand the word nation there's talking about ethnos all right yes he's talking about from the from the minute point of a philosophy of how people live life you know how you know you know society govern their life the bible says all right there will be there will be there will be values rising against values not necessarily people you know coming out with you know guns and fighting each other of course we have seen all of that not not necessarily talking about you know you know one nation you know fighting another with a chemical weapon and all of that biological weapon we're seeing that but from the from the least point of understanding values will challenge values all right philosophy will challenge philosophy that is the point here when you talk about nation ethnos they, they, that little clan that little community all right that little idea that that you have in terms of how you see life how you know people see life from a particular point of view uh, there will be a clash of values there will be a clash of you know of culture we're seeing that in fact that is the heart of the battle of the days that we that we live in nation will rise against nation and kingdom you see nation and kingdom are two different things Na and kingdom against kingdom there there will be both at great earthquakes and famines not just one famines and pestilence all right we seen pestilence yes the corona and the rest and more are still going to come and pestilence in different places there will also be you know a, a fearful sights and great signs verse 12 says but but it says but in all of these things in all of these things they will lay their hands upon you. So we are also seeing that one of the signs, all right, is what is the persecution. Persecution of who? Persecution of the church. Why? Because, amen, they subscribe to a different ethnos, to a different nation, to a different kingdom. All right? It says, but in all of these things, they will lay their hands upon you, all right, and they will persecute you deliver you amen to their synagogue so we begin to understand there's going to be a religious persecution deliver you to their synagogue and and in pre, and, and, and prisons bringing you before kings all right if they are kings they are kingdom bringing you before so there's going to be a more like alliance between all right synagogue religious rulers amen and the kings of the world the kings of the earth so we we seen that that is already happening bringing you before before kings and governors on account of my name what is his name? Amen. His name defines, amen, the value of the kingdom that we subscribe to. His name defines, amen, the value of the kingdom that we subscribe to. All right. The kingdom of God, amen, is housed in the name. What is the name? The name is the nature. The nature of the value of the kingdom is in the name of Jesus. When we say the name of Jesus, we're not just proclaiming a name. We are actually identifying, amen, with a value, with an authority. We are ad identifying with a government. Every, every kingdom is known, amen, by the name the bear. Every kingdom is known by the name. The name they bear reflects their identity, reflects their values, reflects amen, their position, their, their, their philosophy. See, names, the way we know the way we understand names today is not the way names are intended to be understood. All right, the Jews and the you know the the, the, the Asian people they understand the power of a name. 
all right when when the bible says after you know everything that the lord you know the you know the father did and, and the bible says a name was given to us that name is not just like you know uh, uh, an identity you know it's not just you know like today we say what's your name my name is isaiah philip a, a name is not just for our identity a name carries the values the belief system amen the the, 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 the type of life amen where you come from everything about your life is coded within the name that is why God introduces himself to us, amen, you know, with, with different names. All of those names reflect something about who he is, what he represents to us, amen, what he represents, amen, to the world. That is why when we say, amen, he is the prince of peace. He's not just, amen, he's not just carrying peace. He doesn't just have peace. He is the prince of peace. All right. When we say he's the omniscient God, we know what that means. When we say he's the omniscient God, when we say, amen, he is all in all, all of that is to reflect to us, amen, a nature, a position of authority, a position of, of power, amen, a condition, amen, of, of his rulership, all right? So when we say the kingdom of God, and that's why I'm very, you know, cautious, cautious when, I, when I use, amen, the concept of the coming kingdoms, amen, and the rising of and the coming of the kingdom of heaven. I, I deliberately use that because I want us to understand that there's a big difference between, amen, the kingdom of, of this world, amen, and the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Sometimes we just talk about kingdom, but we need to identify which kingdom, all right? Because there are all types of kingdoms. There are all kinds of kingdoms. It says, it says, kingdom will rise against kingdom. And I want us to understand, of course, in the 21st century, uh, hardly would you really find people who truly understand the concept of kingdom because that has almost been, you know, been, been, been wiped away by the values that we subscribe to, by the philosophy that is governing most people today. Most people look at life from a position, from the perspective of democracy. And democracy and kingdom kingdom or i don't seem to agree democracy the concept of democracy and kingdom even though those who established democracy all right they knew what they were doing they were they were actually promoting a kingdom but they, they promote that kingdom in a way where all right they they they, 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 they clouded it they they kind of you know covered it up they kind of you know smoked it up amen by you know by something that is generally accepted you know when the when the children of israel said all right we also want a king when they said to you know you know to the prophet samuel we also want a king like other nations that was the greatest mistake they made in their life in fact that was the point amen that their life began to plummet began to you know nose dive into you know what what we what we, what, we, what we are witnessing today all right it's from that point all right that the position the authority of god amen the government of god all right in the life of the people of israel amen began to nose dive the moment they began to ask for, amen, uh, 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 you know, a position, a condition like others, you know, that, that tells us something about how man fell, amen. <laughs> the Bible says when, when, when Eve looked at that tree, amen, she said, I, I, want, I want this fruit. This fruit can make me wise. There's something about the wisdom of this world. Once that wisdom get an hold over us, we begin to crave for the things of the world. We begin to, in fact, the first thing that begins to happen to us is that we no longer see ourselves the way God sees us. We begin to, we begin to have this sense of inferiority. Because that is amen, what drives the kingdoms of this world. That is what drives the ideologies of this world. You know, when man fell, man fell into himself. So everything that man can do, amen, is, as, is, 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 is at the best of what he can offer himself. Amen. Man cannot give himself anything outside of God. Man cannot give him, excuse me, man cannot give himself anything outside of himself. <laughs> A man cannot give himself anything outside of himself. So now when a greater wisdom says, this is how I want you to live life. This is how I want you to be governed. No, man begins to see that as what? As a challenge. As a challenge to his security. Man begins to fight, amen, that position, that, that authority, that, you know, you know when, when, you, when you have not been governed, you don't know what it means to live under the rule of a father, under the control, under the influence, amen, under the protection of a father. Let's assume you grew up by yourself, all right? You, you did everything by yourself, everything you've in life, amen, you've done it all by yourself. It will be very difficult for you to submit, amen, to leadership, to submit to authority. Because the moment somebody comes into your space or into your life or you come into certain space, and in fact, that's one of the reasons, all right, that people, you know, you know, 
throw all kinds of tantrums all right, in the workplace that they you know they just challenge they fight their boss and all of that because uh, they don't have anybody they, 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 they submit to their honor they respect in their life this is one of the greatest problem that we are having today and that is amen because you know you, you don't have a one who speaks into your life you've you've never experienced somebody say sit there you know get me that thing you know you are you you did you did everything you did amen all by yourself this is one of the problems today we're having in the church because many of the people that amen you know pastors and leaders are trying to you know lead and mentor and build up and disciple are people who are who, who live their life by themselves who grew up by themselves because you live in a you know in a society that is dysfunctional a dysfunctional society all right is an extension of a dysfunctional church if if that church is not governed by the principles of the kingdom because in the kingdom amen we recognize leadership we recognize authority we recognize rankings you know there are there are people that have you know that have tried to join us on, on our you know on our facebook site you know and they've done this to me several times that like when they come to your site they want to talk down on you and they forget that in my sight, amen, it's my domain. That's, that's, my, that's my authority and they want to talk down on you. So you know what I do? I unfriend them. If I don't unfriend them, all right, I start following them. And I, know, and I want them to note that, all right, because I'm teaching them something that there's a way you talk, all right? You don't say because everybody's on social media, you talk down on people, you, 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 you brush them down, all right? You use the same brush that you, you use, you know, in brushing your friend. You, no, you don't do that here in this place we define hallelujah what governance is and that is what it means when we talk about kingdom you've got to understand a man kingdom speaks into administration it speaks into governance it speaks into protocol hallelujah it speaks into leadership a lot of people preaching kingdom 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 but we do not understand all right how the kingdom how the kingdom of god works and of course our kingdom generally works and this is the reason why all right i, I believe that a lot of people are beginning to learn as they interact with us because it's not gonna be easy why because we have imbibed a value amen of 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 of, of you know of low concept of life amen we have imbibed the value amen, of what they call democracy and you know what that means you know what that means when they say democracy it means first of all you have a right to do whatever you want to do right or wrong in the kingdom of god you do not have the right to do whatever you want to do you know you don't you don't you have to follow you know pre prescription you have to follow the right order you have to follow the right pattern yes we will continue to proclaim and declare this. This is why this gospel that we're preaching, amen, it's not for everybody. This is not well. I like it. You don't have to like it. You don't have to like it. You have to understand the principles and the value. What we teach, what Isaiah teach, amen, is not what I prefer. It's not what I like. I teach what the word of God says. So when God says something, I don't have to second guess. I don't have to begin to crack, you know, crack my head. Do I want to do it? Am I doing everything God says? No, but I believe this is what God says and I'm pressing towards it and I'm praying. I'm believing God, amen, that that is what amen, I want to do and that is what I'm, I'm not going to say because I, you know, I find it difficult to to, you know to live by certain values then i'm not going to talk about it i'm not going to preach it no sin is sin the, the bible says god hates sin amen everything amen that is ungodly that is you know lawless is sin the bible says lawlessness is sin so when we live our life amen in a condition of lawlessness amen we're imbibing sin into our life it doesn't mean that you're fornicated amen it doesn't mean that you have stole somebody's uh god knows what it doesn't mean all right that you know you you you, you you've done some heinous crime no when when you live life amen that is lawless where there is lawlessness there is sin you see those are the foundational values of the kingdom and that's why i, I want to talk about you know some you know uh, uh, fundamentals this morning once again we we're going to deal with some basic principle that will allow us to understand because i tell you 90 percent of the people in the church do not understand the message of the kingdom they do not understand because if they understand salvation, then the first layer amen, of their development into the principle, into the, the ways of the kingdom is established. But the truth is, many of us, amen, <laughs> we do not understand what salvation is. We do not understand amen, what amen, being in Christ, being redeemed. What are you redeemed from? Because that's where the kingdom of God amen, starts from. 
Amen. Jesus Christ came to restore us back. Amen. To a kingdom. The Father lives within a kingdom. Amen. He didn't just come to restore us back to the Father. He didn't just come to restore us back to himself. He lives within the kingdom. And that kingdom, amen, is defined by a system. That kingdom is defined, amen, by a value. That kingdom is defined by a culture, by, amen, an identity. That kingdom is defined by government, by authority, by certain power. Hallelujah. That kingdom is defined by certain belief system, certain protocol that we have to understand, we have to know. So when you say you're a king, you are a, you're a Christian, you have to first of all, amen, have this at the back of your mind that I, I am part of the kingdom of God. Any child of God, any Christian, amen, is living within the authority, the influence, and the administration of the kingdom of God. So you cannot say, I'm a, I'm a Christian, but then your lifestyle, your belief system, your, your sense of thinking and reasoning, all right, is still based on the worldly system, which is so-called, quote and unquote, democratic. You cannot practice democracy within the within the influence, within the authority of, of, of you know, of, you know, of, of, you know, of the kingdom of God. Does the kingdom of God challenges democracy? No, but democracy is not the kingdom of God. I, I, I try to broaden that, you know, perspective, that, you know, uh, uh, idea, because those are the two principles that governs our life, all right? How we look at life, how life has been defined to us, amen, from the humanistic worldview, from, amen, the, the Babylonish worldview, amen, from how God defines life, amen, his administration, his ways. There's a way you read the word of God, amen, that the word of God begins to regulate your life. There's a way you read the word of God, and all you see is just an opportunity to become something. You see, God didn't give us the word for us just to become something, just be, to become great. He wants us to be great, but there is a pathway. You will notice that anything that God did amen, in the word and God has done through the life of his people, he did them through certain values, through certain pathway. Amen. Even before Jesus came to this world, Jesus did not just bump into this world. He had to come through a principle, through a pattern. Hallelujah. Through, he had to send, first of all, John the Baptist, who was a way maker. You have to understand that if we live life amen, in the church and we think we're in the kingdom of God, we lie to ourselves. Let me repeat what I've said. If we live life amen, in the church thinking that we're in the kingdom, we lie to ourselves. amen, And the enemy will continue to defeat us. The only time and the only way the enemy will defeat us amen, is when we live our life in assumption. When you assume to be what you are not, you've exposed yourself amen, to the powers of darkness amen, to take advantage of you. When you assume to be what you are not, Amen. When you assume that you're, I mean, imagine David going to going to face Goliath, assuming that he can defeat Goliath. <laughs> I mean, that would be dangerous. Imagine, imagine Moses, amen, standing before rest, you know, the Red Sea, assuming, all right, that, well, well, this is what God said. No, you have to be sure. You have to be certain. You have to be 101%, amen, certain. In the kingdom, there are no uncertainty. The kingdom of God, hallelujah, is the most stabilized, amen, kingdom. And as the kingdoms of this world are shaking and falling apart, amen, in the kingdom, you have stability. What well, today we're not going to be talking about the characters of the kingdom, but I'm laying another foundation because the ideology, amen, that we imbibe, the ideology that we have, the way we think and we reason, amen, speaks into the kingdom that we subscribe to. It's not what we say. It's not what we say. It's not what we preach. Amen. It's not just what we talk about. No. It's what we do. The way we think. The way we... The Bible says, let this mind be in you. That mind of Christ is a mind, amen, that comes from a different kingdom. You cannot, amen, have the mind of Christ and be thinking within the confines of the systems of this world. Kingdom will rise against kingdom. Values are challenging values. Cultures are rising. You know, there are. I've met a lot of people, particularly in South Africa, that they're Christian, they go to church, they're very committed. But guess what? Their values, amen, is still connected, amen, to their, you know, to their tradition, to their ancestors, you know, to the way, you know, uh, uh, you know, the society and the government. And, and the Bible never say we should challenge the government. I'm not saying that, you know, we must rise up and begin to challenge the government. That's not what I'm saying. But of course, any government that seeks, to, amen, to circumvent to destroy the kingdom that you have been subscribed to you have every right in fact it is your right to say to that government sorry you know like shadrach meshach and abednego say they were amen they were under the influence of the most 
powerful empire and kingdom on earth. Amen. Babylon. But guess what? They never said because this is Babylon. Whoa, <laughs> we better we better just yield. We better just submit ourselves, or we are done for. They understand one thing that once you're in the kingdom, your allegiance is to one king. All right, and the message of that kingdom, Alia, and the message you represent to you know of of the kingdom of God to the world, to the other kingdom, Amen, is a message of hope, is a message of redemption, Amen, is a message of 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 restoration, Amen. The Bible says Christ died, Amen, so that everyone may come into the kingdom, may come into the kingdom of life. Remember, first of all, that this this world we're talking about was stolen. The world does not belong to the devil. All right, he superimposed himself, amen. He took advantage, all right. Man abdicated his position through the fall of the first man and his wife in the garden, all right. So he said, This kingdom has been given to me, and that's why he said to Jesus. But guess what? Jesus con when Jesus conquered him on the cross, when he rose on the third day, he said, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. But he didn't just go with that power, he gave it to us. So today, we, amen, as, as the church, as the body of Christ, as the ecclesia, we have authority in the earth. The world does not, long, does not belong to the devil again. It belongs to us. But guess what? Many of the power, amen, that was given to him, all right, by, by, you know, by, by Adam in the garden, amen, he's still using them, all right, to, to deceive, to lure people. But it's for us, amen, who have come to light. And how, how we come to light, how we come to a position where we can represent the things of God, a part of the things that we're talking about. And that's why I said there are, there are, there are coming together of kingdoms, but there is, amen, the coming of the kingdom of God, the coming of the kingdom of heaven. There's a superior kingdom that is coming, amen, and that kingdom is at work in our life. That kingdom is at work, amen, within our values. You see, the kingdom of God, first of all, has to be first established within, amen, our inner life, our belief system, our values, amen, our thought pattern, amen, how we think, how we reason. If that, amen, is changed. If that is changed, it's easy for us to begin to move to other dimension, other level of what the kingdom of God represents. We have to take this, amen, gradually, amen, but, you know, precept upon precept, line upon line, a little here, a little there. This is very, very crucial, all right? You know, many of us have jumped, we've jumped, start with, we've, we've jumped, we, we, we've, we've shunned, amen, our values and principle when it comes to the things of God. And that is why it's easy for the enemy, amen, to leer us, to deceive us, amen, to to sell a lie to us and we buy it amen so we want to believe god that amen through this uh, uh, through this uh, uh, teaching all right i hope i'm not too fast i i think i'm a bit fast but I, there's so much to say but i want to believe god amen that we will try to understand amen the the, the principle of laying the foundation and then begin to build amen the the framework of, of what defines the understanding amen of of life in the kingdom within the kingdom amen and of course how we can represent that kingdom in such a way that we are not afraid amen of fear we're not afraid of death we're not afraid of sickness we're we're not afraid, amen, of disease. We're not afraid of famine because all of this has been prophesied. See, in the kingdom of God, there are prophecy. As a prophet, if I'm not in the kingdom, I'll be prophesying, amen, all kinds of things. That's why the kingdom is the framework that defines, amen, our ministry. Ministry gift, amen, must flow, must, must operate, amen, from the understanding of the kingdom of God. A prophet must function from amen, a position of his, his place in the kingdom. Amen. An apostle must live and build amen, from a position amen, of the kingdom of God. A teacher must teach amen, from, the, from the spiritual philosophy of the kingdom of God. Amen. A pastor, amen, a shepherd must shepherd and pastor the people from the dimension, from the reality of the kingdom of God. Everything we do, hey, let me, let me take it further. Amen. Husband and wife must live and and function, amen, from the framework of the kingdom of God. We must raise our children, amen, from the perspective of the, you see, when we live life from the order of the kingdom, we will preach the truth, nothing but the truth, hallelujah. We will declare the truth, nothing but the truth, amen. We will represent the things of God, hallelujah. <clears throat> the kingdom of God must define what shapes our values, what shapes our belief, what shapes our thought pattern? The kingdom of God must define, amen, what defines how we live life, what we buy, what we what we love, what we don't love, hallelujah. Because in the kingdom, hallelujah, we have a preference, we have a sense of life, we have a sense of living. So you, you will agree with me that that is not an easy thing. That is not something that we have generally come to believe. 
and that's why we have to touch the concept amen of salvation so let me quickly finish the thoughts that i was you know sharing earlier on the children of israel they said we want a king we want to be like other 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 kingdoms we want to be like other nations and like i said that was their biggest mistake because god amen was their was their king <clears throat> he wanted to be their king he wanted to be and what does that mean to be their king it doesn't mean that he was going to physically come to the earth to leave them. No, it means that everything that they, they, they stand for, they live for, amen, is subscribed from his, from his administration, all right, from his position in, in their life. In other words, he's the one guiding whoever is representing him, all right? Yes, whoever is representing him on earth, amen, lives his life directly, amen, from what God says, from what God, amen, wants, from what God desires. And that is what, amen, he is still saying today in the position of the New Testament church, amen, as the New Testament church, amen, Christ is our king, is the head of the church, is the head of the home. You know, I always say this, since the time I've been preaching and I've been marrying people in nigeria i always tell you know the couple i say hey marriage is made of three not two it's not two it's three if you if you think your marriage is about just two of you <laughs> you you made a mistake no there is one in the marriage that rules that that defines that marriage christ is the head of your home he is the one that both of you must subscribe to so as you live your life whatever you do you've got to recognize that it is christ in this marriage and when you do that guess what there is no devil that can destroy that marriage amen there is no power of darkness that can when you understand that christ is the head of your business you see you will live your life and you will do things you will you will carry out amen the values of that business amen first to glorify him even people that are not christian they understand that Right? That that thing is dedicated, amen, unto a God. How much more us who have a better understanding? You know, we want to do something. The first thing we think about is ourselves. That is a wrong way of thinking. You see, when you live in the kingdom of God, the first thing you think about is what will be the mind of God? What will be the desire of God all right, regarding this thing? Whatever it is that I'm doing, wherever, wherever I'm going, all right? Is, 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 is it the will of God? Is, is that what God wants for me? All right? Does God want me to leave South Africa to move to United States of America? All right? Am I moving to United States of America just because I'm looking for greener pasture and the, and the green passport? Or am I moving there because that is the desire of God? That is the mandate of God. All right? Or is God saying, amen, leave America and go live in Somalia because that is my will for you? You see, it's vice versa. All right? The kingdom of God is not taking us just to a place where we think, amen, is, 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 is good for us. The kingdom of God, amen, is leading us to a place where heaven desire and design for us. Where he leads us is where we find prosperity. Where he leads us is where we find peace. Where he leads us is where we find joy. Where he leads us is where we find, amen, grace. Is where we, hallelujah, carry out that which will give us fulfillment. Listen, you can be facing resistance and challenge every day of your life. Life, but you have peace on the inside that is the expression of the kingdom of god so what am i saying i'm gonna bring it quickly to the heart of this message the scripture says amen in in in, in second uh, corinthians second corinthians chapter 5 all right verse verse 17 all right we all know that scripture very popular scripture i'm gonna read it again but let me take it from verse 16 it says from now on we regard no one we regard no one from a worldly point of view. From now on, from this point on, we regard no one. <clears throat> I want you to see something here because I'm going to be connecting that to all right, John chapter 3. Because we want to understand. You see, many people have taught what you would define as advanced knowledge of the kingdom. Why, amen, the foundation is now there. And so the church, the people cannot connect, cannot, they cannot relate all right they've heard this powerful gospel of the kingdom they've they, they've been taught what the kingdom of god is the power of the kingdom the authority of the kingdom but they do not have a a foundation that those truths can rest upon that is why hallelujah as you know as 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 a good rabbi as a good teacher all right who have been exposed amen to the to the principles of the of the kingdom via the via his discipleship amen he knows hallelujah, how to bring from the old and the new he knows how to you know express the heart and the mind of god to the people and that is the work amen of a good amen leader you have to 
bring the people to clarity. Everybody must know. You will notice that whenever Jesus, you know, teach and he preach, amen, his disciples are always coming back for better clarity. All right, sometimes he rebukes them, but he better, he, you know, he, he, he further expand, amen, that truth to them. All right, because he says the things of the kingdom are mysteries. They are, they are hidden, they are shrouded in parables. So if you have no sense of understanding, if the spirit of understanding is not in you, and you understand that you cannot understand except you're born again, understanding, knowledge, wisdom, amen, uh, uh, counsel, all of that comes from the spirit of God. So if you're not born again, the spirit of God is not alive in you. You are not activated, amen, to walk, to understand the things of God. And therefore, all of the things that you're going to be seeing is like men walking like trees. You're going to be hearing things and going to be saying, well, it turned you will not have a clear interpretation and this is what the prophetic is all about the prophetic like i read the prophetic you know uh, 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 it's not just about you know future telling it's not just about what is coming in the end time the prophetic is establishing the people are there on the revelation amen of the word of god you've got to take the people deeper you've got to you got to be sure that they have a root hallelujah amen in the ways of god in the will of god in the values of god in the in the in the essence of god you understand and then their head must be piercing the heavens they must have a standing their life must become that ladder that point of connection they must they must have a root in the earth yet hallelujah they have a position where they can hear where they can receive from heaven hallelujah so let's quickly look at second chronic uh, excuse me corinthians it says from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view though we once regard christ in this way so Paul is saying there's a shift, Corinthian church, though we once regard you know, Christ from a point of view. Imagine all of the people that follow Jesus. They were looking at him from, their, you know, from the values that you know, society has defined. That's why they could not accept him as the king. That's why you know, the Pharisee could, could look at him and say, you cannot be our king. What, what, where's your kingdom? Where's your crown? Well, you know, okay, you've got followers, but these followers are just, you know, this, these are, you know, d defeated people. These ones cannot fight the Roman Empire. You see, their way of thinking totally, amen, stood against, amen, how God defines life. Isn't, isn't that the same problem we, we find today? You know, when we look at things, we look at people and we conclude, we look at circumstance, all right, and we conclude based on the understanding, based on how we have been programmed to think, based on how we have been defined, amen, to see things and value things. There's a way you value things, amen, and you come to the wrong conclusion. There's a way you look at things and you have an accurate understanding of what the lord is saying this is the most important thing in the concept amen of our redemption and salvation because if you are in christ jesus if you're if you say you're in church you're born again amen and you are still seeing things you are still evaluating things from the way you used to when you are unbeliever something has not changed in fact you're not born again yet from now on we regard no one after a worldly point of view the world has a view. And the reason for that is because the world, amen, the people of the world, they live under an influence, under a control. Remember, when, 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 when Satan took Jesus to the pinnacle, he showed him the glory of this world. He said, if you bow to me, I will give it to you. In other words, all the people in this world, as they bow to me, I allow them to have a share. And that's why they're, they're rich. That's why they have this influence. That's why they have this power. That's why they can undo and undo. And, you know, in their power, they think, well, they are invincible. They don't understand that that power was given to them because they have bowed their knees to a spirit. They bowed their knees to compromise. They bowed them, they, themselves to Lucifer. They've given themselves, amen, to the prince of this world. The Bible says, amen, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality, against power, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You better believe, amen, that we are living under an influence of spirit, of powers, amen. Amen. of kingdoms and dominions the bible called them but because we live in christ jesus hallelujah we are not influenced by what amen is influencing the world the world today amen is under a strong spirit of delusion amen the world today the people of the world today amen are living under a 
powerful spirit of delusion, deception, lies, amen, perversion, amen, is the order of the day. And that's why people can wake up tomorrow and tell you there is no God. That's why people can wake up tomorrow and, and declare, no, I can decide to marry my dog. I can decide to marry that man as a man. I can decide to marry that woman as a woman, amen. Everything that defines the values, the standard, amen, the principles of God, the moral standard of God, amen, the world have, have, have rose up to challenge it. The Bible says the kings of this world have gathered themselves together amen and the laws of this world to challenge god and his anointed you know what because they cannot see how can they believe in a god that they cannot see their life is defined by their sensuality even science proves to us all right that not everything that we see amen defines life many of the things that our life is governed by are unseen how do you explain, amen, the, the, the principle behind, amen, audiovisual? How do you explain, amen, there are waves in the air. There are, there are waves that are carrying thousands and millions, amen, of information that we don't know, amen, how these things work. Physics will tell us a bit of them, but even physics, amen, is limited. Science is limited when it comes to, amen, the principle that governs this world. This is a world that God created, amen, as a reflection of his authority, as a reflection of his administration. All right. So we have to understand that to say, well, because I can't see it, I can't feel it, I can't touch it, is, is not real. That's a lie because even science proves to us that that is a lie. The science that they claim that they subscribe to. The God of signs that they claim they believe, amen, hallelujah, tells them, amen, that there are things that you cannot see, but they're real. And in fact, you can see their manifestation. That's why the Bible says in the book of Romans, oh man, you do not have excuse. Because even the things, hallelujah, that you see speaks of the things you do not see. Oh. From now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do no longer. Verse 17, therefore, if anyone, if anyone, white, yellow, colored, black, if anyone, there are no racial barrier to this, to this word. If anyone, there are no, you know, sexual barriers, all right? If anyone, if anyone, anyone means anyone, regardless of who you are, where you are, what, where you've come from, what you have done in, in the past, hallelujah, regardless of amen, what they called amen, the, 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 the part of your continent. They may say you are, you are in the third world or you're in the second world or you're in the first world. If there's anything like that, all right, yeah, they may say, well, you are in some forgotten island, amen, or some forgotten God knows where. No matter where you come from, you may be in the, in the, in a, in, a, in a zone where all right, bullets are flying over your head every minute, every here and there. All right? People have grown up to know war and battles. Amen? In a place where there is a gang, gangster war every day going on there. All right? If anyone, you see, the condition of, of your redemption and salvation is not, is, is not what matters. What matters is if anyone, if anyone, hallelujah, listen to this, if anyone be in Christ, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. There is something that changes in your life, all right, when you accept Christ. That, amen, begin to transform your outer life as a continual process of your submission in obedience to what, amen, you have come to accept. If anyone be in Christ... First of all, verse 16 says, we used to know Christ. We used to live life from a particular point. We used to look at people from a particular worldly view. He said, but if you have come, that's the key word. The key word there is if. Can you cross from the way you used to see things, the way you used to understand things, to amen, crossing into Christ. When you accept Christ, you are now living in him. When you accept Christ, hallelujah, you are now living in him. I want to take you back to a scripture we looked at a, 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 a few days ago as we continually dealt with this concept of you know, the, the foundational values of the kingdom. Because I need to make this clear. If you don't get the things that I'm saying right now, if, I, if you don't get the things that we have said in the past you know, one week or two amen, on our introduction to the kingdom, if you don't get it clear, listen to this. Whatever anybody teaches you or tells you about the kingdom, of God, it will just excite you, but it will not sit. 
It will not have a sitting on the inside. It will not have, it's like a seed that has fallen, amen, on a wayside ground. It's like a seed that has fallen among thorns, all right, that, you know, that, that, that the thorns have choked the life out of that seed, all right. The kingdom of God begins as a seed, and the seed of that kingdom begins from a point, amen, of redemption, salvation. It's important if you don't get what salvation is, because I want to show you some principle. If you don't get this right, listen to this, friends. You can hear all the book. In fact, you can write books about the kingdom. You can preach about the kingdom. But if this is not clear to you, I'm afraid there's no going further. There's no going forward. If this is not clear, there is no going further. There's no going forward. So, are you saying that I'm not going to have it? No, you're going to have a lot, a, a, lot, a lot of knowledge because whatever you read, you get to know it. But what you read must be translated into truth. If, if that is not there, it's going to be challenging. This truth has to be seated. And let me tell you something. I won't, I won't lie to you. I'll tell you the truth. It's going to take a while. You see, that's why it's a certain truth. We say it the way it is. People may get angry. People may not like it. But... You know, after a while, maybe months later or years later, they're like, wow. But that, that thing is true. Even if they don't come to tell you that, you know, what you said was true, but they will get to realize it. Now, that is one of the calling of a prophet. He says it the way it is, of course, in love, amen, in truth and in mercy. But guess what? You, you have a choice either to accept it or re to reject it. And when you reject it, it doesn't change the truth. Remember, I shared a scripture some few days ago. There is nothing that we can do to the truth except for the truth if i don't preach what i'm preaching somebody else will preach it if i don't declare this truth somebody else will declare it guess what it does it doesn't mean that the fact that isaiah did not preach it or because isaiah feels oh yeah this truth is gonna hurt somebody you know so yeah, listen people will preach it somebody else will preach it there are things that we imbibe there are medicine that we take they are they're quite bitter but we don't say because they are bitter amen we, we won't take them because we know that they work. <laughs> we know that they work. We used to know Christ, amen, from a worldly point. From now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. That worldly point of view is a philosophy. And philosophy governs how we live life. People have married from a wrong philosophy. They've raised their home, family, children from a wrong philosophy. They've engaged into business from a wrong philosophy. All right? They've, 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 they've gone to, you know, to God knows, you know, any length of, of, of the wall with, with the wrong idea. Listen to what Jesus said about the Pharisee. He says they will travel the length of the earth to win a proselyte, only to go make that proselyte twice the son of the devil. So, you see, motive motive if our motive is not aligned to the right philosophy we will never do the right thing so we can it, it may seem as if we're doing the right thing but if the motive amen is not right we'll never arrive amen at, at rightness at correctness as truth from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view though we once regarded christ in this way we do not we do not we do not no longer therefore if anyone is in christ he's a new creation listen to this he's a new creation the old has gone the new has come the old has gone the new has come as the old gone if you're in christ the old has gone what is the old the old is everything that does not come from god the old is everything that is not aligned to his ways to his will the old is every identity belief system amen pattern of thinking living life amen standard of life that is not amen designed from the values from the principles of god amen that is all you must be able to identify what is the old in your life what must go because if you don't know what is the old how can you embrace the new how can you embrace the truth if you don't know hallelujah what you what you need christ for how would you know amen that accepting christ will give you freedom You see, certain knowledge is required for us to accept Jesus. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. Nobody comes to Christ with a sense of pride, with a sense of, well, I think I'm doing well. No. That's why Pilate had to ask Jesus, this thing you're saying of me, 
did, did somebody told you about it? Or is this something you have discovered? Do you truly know me as the king of the Jew? Or are you saying it because somebody told you? I've said it before. I'll say it again. The days amen, of third party knowledge is over. You see, what I'm giving to you right now is a third party knowledge. To me, it's a revelation. But to you, hallelujah, it's a third party. You have to take this thing amen, and walk in. And walk the process. What is the work in the process? You have to meditate. You have to take this word. You have to pray. You know, this morning I woke up and it's like the Lord was saying many of the things that we've talked about in the past. Some of our disciples need to go back and you know, and refresh their mind. You need to refresh your mind. You see, because the truth does not come because you engage it once and that's it. No, 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 no. You see, you have to have the attitude of going back to the same thing. You have to go back to that thing again. You have to look at it again. You have to uncover it again and discover it again and uncover it again and rediscover it again. You have to, you must go back. The things you thought, well, I know that thing. No, no, no. You have, when you go back to that thing, you are going to discover something new again. There are things that we have preached in time past. In fact, I know that because sometimes I go back to some of our teachings and I'm like, wow, did, did we say that? Did we preach that? All right, yes. But you see, we're forever looking for something new, something new. That is not the way to grow in the things of the, of the Spirit, in the things of God. No, you have to go back to the, you have to have the desire. You have to have the quest. You have to go back to your notes. You have to read again and find what is the heart of God. This thing this man is talking about, as he says something similar, you know, to this point before, you go back, you search, amen. You go back to the, you know, to, 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 to the, you know, to the online platform. You look for those teachings. Look at what the Spirit of God is saying to you. Go back. There are references. Go and awaken those references. Go and resurrect those truth again in your spirit. You see, if you don't engage the truth, if you are not committed to engaging the truth, you never get to have all of it. You might have one or two here and there and you're going to preach something nice and everybody's going to get excited because that is the order of the day. We just want to get excited. We want to get, you know, yes, hallelujah. You want to get somebody motivated. It's good. I do that. We need to do that. But guess what? We also need to teach people, amen, to go back, amen, to engage. It's a principle, amen, of, 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 re of re-evaluating. You have to go back. You have to look at it again, like the Bereans. You have to go back again, look at it. You have to cross-check again, hallelujah, so that you know that you are established. Because if you're established in the truth, when trial comes, you'll be standing. When we're established in the truth, when we are faced with opposition, the first thing we we'll think about will not be to run, to fly, to flee, to fret, to, to freeze. No, we'll be thinking, amen, of how to engage, how to go further. That was David for you. Everybody's retreating, you know. Looking for where to hide from this giant. David said, okay, I see. I see how tall you are. But something you don't see is the angel standing behind me. A giant, what you're not seeing is the God that is backing me. Is the name that I come with. Are you getting this? That is not, that is not somebody who was speaking from a point of you know, presumption. Or uh, a point of you know, just you know, religious excitement. This guy knew what he was talking about. Esther knew what she was dealing with when she said, guys, fast for me. Let's pray and fast. After three days, I'm going to go appear you know, before the king, even though nobody's allowed to do that. I mean, <laughs> when you know what you, what you have, you are ready to lay your, 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 your head down, your neck down for what you believe. You see? That's what I'm talking about. It's not a third party knowledge. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, earlier found themselves, amen, not compromising. It's because they know something. The same God who revealed the dream to them. They knew that same God, amen, will be there. The same God, amen, who, who replenished their strength, amen, and transformed their body, hallelujah. That, amen, 10, 10, you know, 10 days of, of feeding, amen, on, 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 on water and, on, and veggies made them look 10 times better. And their counterparts. You see, they had a reference. All of these people had a reference. You don't jump to the things of God and think, oh, hallelujah, you're just going to go fight the devil. No. That's presumptive living. And many Christians are, are presumptive. Presumptive. We prophesy out of presumption. 
We, we engage things out of presumption. We, we, we say things out of presumption. And then we face the repercussion. Then we want to go hide. No. If, you, if you're ever going to challenge, amen, the powers of darkness, amen, and, and tyrannical leadership, amen, you have to know where you stand and what you're standing on. You have to understand that you are in Christ Jesus. You see, many of these great people we read about, they knew what they believed. I'm not even talking about the heroes in the Bible. Many of the great people who, who did wonderful things. We read about them. The John G. Lake, the Charles Finney's of this world. Amen. The, all of this, you know, uh, 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 D.L. Moody and many of them, you know, uh, even the people like Watchman Nee and many of them that have gone forth. Listen, they had, they had an encounter. That's why listen to this. Christianity does not begin from a position of giving your life to Jesus. Christianity begins with an encounter. That encounter is what allows you to say, I surrender. If you surrender to what you have not encountered, that's religion. That's religion. By faith you move because you've come to the end of yourself. Because you've come to the end of amen, your own ways. You've come to the end of your own democratic you know, values. Say, I want to come into the kingdom of God. To come into Christ is to come into the kingdom. And it's from that position of Christ's life that you begin to grow. That you begin to increase and develop. Amen. It's in Christ that we develop into the kingdom life. It's in Christ. Because listen to this. The kingdom basically is the administration. is the government of God. So if you're in Christ, hallelujah, your life will allow you, amen, to grow, to increase, amen, in what the kingdom of God, basically a kingdom represents, uh, a kingdom, amen, is designed to represent a king, a kingdom, amen, showcase the glory of a king, hallelujah, a kingdom reflect, amen, the, 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 the authority, hallelujah, of one who sits on the throne, a kingdom is as powerful as the king. Not the other way around. A kingdom is as powerful as the king. If you defeat the king, you've defeated the kingdom. So it's not the other way around. There's so much revelation around, you know, so much things we're saying around the kingdom of God that is not in context. That is not in consonant, amen, to the revelation of Christ. You see, when the king on the throne of our heart, when the king, amen, on, on, on the throne of our life, amen, has become real and clear to us, it's so easy to represent his kingdom. You see, we wrote a material not last year, amen, on redefining authority. That material was about understanding what the kingdom of God is. What that kingdom is, is a reflection of who we are in Christ. If you're in Christ, you will not abuse authority. If you're in Christ, you will not take advantage, amen, of your brother, of your sister, of the people that you're called to lead. You will know that, amen, given a position of authority is a privilege, hallelujah. It's a great privilege. It's a sacred calling. <laughs> are you getting this, friends? You will know that. You won't take advantage because you know that you're also, amen, under an influence. You see, what, the moment we remove Christ, and that is, the, that is the false gospel that is being preached to us today. A lot of things that we are preaching outside the context of Christ. Outside the context of Christ. That's why, listen to this, the world today, the, excuse me, the church today is in big trouble. And this is why God is sending some of us, amen, to go back and begin to, amen, redisciple the church. I'm not sent to the world. I'm not sent to the world. Everybody sent to, you know, to preach salvation. I do that. But my primary assignment, amen, is to the church, is to the body. Because if you can get the body realigned, it's easy, amen, to get full soldier. It's easy to build up. It's easy to raise up an army for the Lord. It's easy to send, to deploy a people into the field. But guess what? If the church is weak, hallelujah, we will go with a weak, we will go with a weak message. If the church is blind, we will go with the blind message. Hallelujah. If the church is amen, malnourished, guess what? We will be we will be malnourished in our representation. If the church, hallelujah, is fearful, we will preach Christ out of fear. 
So some people need to go back, amen, and begin to say, church, we've done it the wrong way. We need to come back, amen. We need to reorder. We need to realign. We need to, we need to return back to the footing. Listen, returning back to the footing does not mean that returning back to, you know, uh, to, to, you know, to primary things. Yes, they are primary, but primary things are what defines the secondary things. If you don't have, amen, a solid foundation, if you don't have a solid foundation, you cannot build, no matter the resource you have. If you, if you don't have a solid footing, listen to this, no matter the resource you have, you can go up. Because when you try to build on that weak sandy foundation your house is going to collapse all we need is just one rain all we need is just one one, one wind <laughs> all they need is just a flood coming everything you have invested into this is what is happening to the church today that's why people people are crying around pa pastors are running here and there you know believers are scared all kind why because the foundation amen was never built for the nature of the day we are called to engage the foundation was too weak. The foundation is not, is not supposed to be weak. Your foundation must not be compromised. If the foundation be destroyed, the foundation speaks of the values, speaks of the mentality, the way of thinking, the way of reasoning. Hallelujah. When I speak of foundation, I'm not just talking about you pouring concrete and cement. Concrete and cement represent the values, the belief system, the understanding. Hallelujah. How you, how you engage the word of God. Foundation is when, amen, you know, teachers come to the church and begin to build the people precept upon precept. Amen. More Monday after Monday, Tuesday after Tuesday, amen. Weekend, you are in there. You have been trained. You have been built. You have been empowered. You have been resourced. Hallelujah. You are standing firm and strong. It's in foundation we know how you pray. It's in foundation, hallelujah, that you are allowed, you're given a scripture to preach upon and we listen to you preach. Say, preach to us, let's hear, hallelujah. And we correct, amen, your, your, your ecstasies. We bring you to in a, the understanding of what the Lord is saying. It's in foundation that we teach the people how to exegete the word of God. It's in foundation that we teach people doctrine. Are people running with revelation who don't have a doctrine. They don't have a doctrine of what they're talking about. The thing, the things of the spirit is just about spirit, spirit, spirit. If you talk about spirit, spirit, and you do not have a man a precise understanding to the word of God, you will become a spiritist. Just like many people in the church, many pastors, many prophets have become spiritists. It's like you're going to your Sangoma, you're going to the abolish, you're going to, you know, God knows who, amen, to see something for you. You understand this? You have to deal with all kinds of all kinds of wrong beliefs. You don't open yourself to false spirit. You don't open yourself, amen, to false identity. You don't open yourself, hallelujah, to wrong, to wrong influence. You let the word of God guard you. That is why, amen, this thing that we're doing on this platform, amen, is established. You can read it on the screen, amen. So the word of the Lord, hallelujah. So the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord powerfully continue, amen, to spread, amen, and it prevailed. That's what we are building this thing on. I'm not saying things, amen, that, you know, that just excite you. I, I, I love to preach in excitement because I'm excited preaching the word of God. But if my message is just to excite you, then I failed. I want you to learn in the excitement. I want you to pick, hallelujah. And I'm not going to preach you into, into slumber. No, no, no. I'm excited. I'm happy. Every time I come here to, to proclaim the word of God, I know it's warfare. I understand the, the things that I go through before I come here. I know, you know, sometimes I have to fight. I have to do all kinds of things just to broadcast. But I also understand when I, when I sit and finally, I'm ready to declare the word of God. I am the most excited person because listen to this. This is the most powerful thing that can ever happen to any human. This is the most blessed. This is the most important message because it speaks into the human soul. It speaks into the human life. Amen. There is no other thing. There's no other assignment. No matter how important that thing is, amen, that is as important as what I'm doing because this is the only message. This is the only assignment. If you will, this is the only profession, amen, that speaks to children change the deformity the the, the carnal nature the, the fallen nature of man so i i embrace this i magnify my office i love what i'm doing for a billion for a billion us dollars i will not i will not i will not exchange this message for anything i honor god and i honor him for the honor that he has given to me to be his mouthpiece it's not easy and he never said it's going to be easy but we declare this message with truth 
If anyone be in Christ, he's no longer of himself. If anyone, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. Is a new creation. Is a new creation. A new creation. A creation that has been reborn. Reborn. And I remember explaining that time to you. To be born means to be born above. To be born from above. All right. Any person who says they are born again, it means, amen, you have been born again from above. The word above means beyond the values of this world. Amen. This is a birth that is not of the human will. That is not something that happened because a man and a woman come together. All right. No, no, no. This is what Jesus was trying to explain, amen, to Nicodemus. Let's go, let's go back to that. So I told her I was going to lead you, amen, to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Now there was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. That's, that's the highest position you can be. Is a member, amen, of the Jewish ruling council. Back in those days, amen, the Jewish ruling council defines what happens in the land. They defines the law, amen. Back in those days, the law speaks into both, you know, the spiritual, you know, the, 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 the social life, amen, and the civil life, all right? The law is everything. Nicodemus was a member. He's one of the chief, you know, in fact, they say he's the chief rabbi. He sits, he, he, he watches, amen, he, he, he speaks into the leadership that leads the nation. They are the ones that interact with the Roman Empire. If the Roman, if the Roman Empire, remember back in those days, the Roman Empire was in control amen, of the entire you know, sphere. So they are the ones that interact with the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire allowed them to do what they need to do all right, in terms of their Jewish you know, beliefs and tradition and all of that. All right, why Caesar was the, the final rule. Even though that was a compromise, but that's how it is. So this guy amen, is in government. The religious government defines the lifestyle of the people, defines how the people think, how the people reason, all right? defines amen, how, who they marry, how they marry, what they eat, their, their produce, economy, everything, all right? their political beliefs and affiliation, they define it. So that is Nicodemus for you, is, 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 is an authority. Authority not just in spiritual things, but also in politics, in, in, in leadership. These people are very rich, they're influential. A member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night. And I believe, Father, we thank you. I just thank you, Father. That today we are beginning to have members of amen, the ruling council of nations coming. Yes, they will locate Christ. They want to find Christ. Lord, we do not, we do not, we do not refuse them. We do not cast them away. We, we, we open the door. The Bible says that he came to Jesus. Just like the Bible says the Greeks came to Jesus. They said we want to see Jesus. We believe that the time has come as we begin to proclaim and declare the values of the kingdom of God. We believe the days are coming where there will be an influx, amen, yes, of leadership from the political you know, uh, uh, sphere. Yes, in the name of Jesus, they will come. They will say we want to see Christ. They will come as Nicodemus came in the night. Father, we will open the door to them in the name of Jesus and we will speak to them as we interact with them. We will bring them to the knowledge of your counsel and your will as they come, Lord, from the community, as they come, Lord, from the state level, as they come from a provincial level help us to be ready to be carriers of the true christ help us to be positioned in the ways of your kingdom so that when they come we'll not see their money bag we'll not see oh god their garment we'll not see the apparel we'll not see oh god yes the, the the men in blacks that come with them we'll not see their big cars we'll not see their jet plane loader we'll not see their influence but we'll see their soul we'll see how famished how hungry we'll see oh god how blind they are i'll we'll be able to minister to them we pray lord give us grant us grace that when these people begin to come, we will not see them, oh God, as a leverage. Do you know who came to visit me today? The governor, the prime minister came to my house. This is how the church has reduced the things of the spirit. We use people who come to our church, politicians who come to our community, to our houses, as a leverage. Rather than see their soul, rather than minister to them, we see them. As things, tools we can use to gain more land, to gain more influence and position. Help us, Father. Ah, I just speak that in my spirit. 
Nicodemus came to Jesus, but Jesus refused to see who, who Nicodemus you know, is in terms of amen, his position, his affluence, his influence. Jesus saw straight into his heart. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know. In other words, we the council understand. We have been watching. Friends, you've got to know that we are, hallelujah, at war with, with values. We are at war, amen, with a position, amen, of, 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 of falsehood, false knowledge. They know what is true, but they don't want to accept it. So don't compromise. We know. We know. We've been watching you. We know. We know you are a teacher who came from God. <laughs> we know. Like many people know, this guy, Isaiah Phillips, we know he's a prophet sent from God. We know. But the fact that they know does not mean that they will accept it. They will accept the message. We know. You see, only those who know and humble themselves are those who will bear the light. Are those who will accept, are those who will be changed. Because to them, you have come to fight, you have come to challenge, you have come to stand against what we have preached, what we have been proclaiming. People are bought into this thing. We have been so rich from these things that we've been preaching until you came to our community. That's why they fought me. No, we will not allow you to have any part in this place. We will not allow you to establish a church here. We will not allow you to talk to our people. They will blackmail you. They will, they will say all kinds of things against you. They will rise against you. They will challenge you. They will badmouth you. They will talk about you among themselves, among their community. Because they know and they're afraid. We know. We know who you are. You are a teacher who comes from God. They didn't say you are a preacher. They didn't say we are a prophet. They say you've come with a teaching. And teaching is what changed people. Prophecy is good. Well, what Jesus brought was a principle that was going to change the way that people think. And did Jesus succeed? Yes, he did. <laughs> he did. Yes, some followed him for the bread and fish. But many followed him amen, for the truth he brought. From the, for, for the truth he preached. And if you and I will continue to preach, maybe I'm speaking to somebody. If you will continue to preach and declare the word of God and begin to teach sound doctrine. Listen, it may take a while. It took me a while to get to this point. The journey is still far. But guess what? We've been able, hallelujah, to sow the right seed in the heart of certain people and their life will never be the same again. Even if they are no longer with Isaiah Phillips, guess what? They can never deny that they have been imparted, that their life has been touched, that their soul has been touched, hallelujah, that something great has been deposited in their life. They can never deny it. We know. Oh, I love this word. You can't deny it. We know you're a teacher who comes from God. You didn't come from another order. We know you came from God. This, these are the Pharisee talking here. This is, this is Nicodemus talking here. This is the, 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 the chief guy among the council. Among the elders, we know, we know. You're a teacher who comes from God. No one could, amen. No one could perform the miracle. You see, this man is a teacher, yet he has the ability to perform miracles. Who says teachers can perform miracles? Who says, amen, the truth cannot, in fact, is, is not the truth supposed to bring us to freedom and liberty? Amen. No one can perform. This is the testimony, amen that nicodemus brought from the council from the religious council that's why they are afraid <laughs> not because jesus stole not because jesus said anything uh, listen to this the more we preach the truth the more we will be persecuted the more we stand for truth the more we will be challenged the more you stand for truth the more you decide to live your life listen when i say preach the truth i'm not just talking about you having a pulpit you having a microphone your life ought to be a man a voice of the gospel of the kingdom the more you live a life that show that reflect the value standard the more you're not doing what everybody's doing the more you're setting the standard the more you are setting the pace the more amen you continue to you know raise the bar the more you continue to show the people around you amen how to live life the more they're gonna hate you you think they're gonna love you they will see you amen, as a rival. They will see you as the enemy. Because you're declaring something that is not popular. That is not generally accepted. You see, people like to live in a false community. 
This is how we how we live our life as colored people. This is how we do things. You know, you know, as as blacks, this is how we do things. It's a, as Africaners, this is how we do things. As whites, this is how we do things. But when you come with a different order, amen, that challenges what they have come to believe and accept, you are the enemy. Even if what you're saying, amen, is the truth, until the Lord, amen, grant an opening and somebody says, but wait a minute, but this thing works. But this thing is true, but this thing has changed my life. They will fight you. People hate a change, particularly when that change is coming from somebody who does not look like them, who doesn't talk like them, who doesn't reason like them. They will fight you. It is the nature of humans. Humans are very territorial, like dogs. Yesterday we watched, you know, some dogs in our area here, you know, chasing other dogs from another area. Just for the fact that that dog, those dogs came to their territory, they believe that, no, we're in charge here. We must charge against them. And God help those dogs if they are not more powerful. The ones that are passive, if they are not stronger. There's going to be a war. There's going to be a fight. That is the fallen human nature. That's why we say humans are behaving like beasts that cannot think and reason. Somebody move into the same business that you're doing. You immediately see the person as a rival. No, you have to find a way in our building alliance. You find a way of building alliance. Because the moment you see somebody as a rival, that spirit will hit you up to the point that you will lose your values, your position, your condition of creativity. When you, when you focus more on the negative, when you focus more on build, pulling people down, destroying other people, pulling what they're doing down, you will never be able to see what God is showing you. You will never be able to walk in the path of creativity. Celebrate what others are doing. Even if you don't have what it takes, celebrate it. And then you will see how the door will open for you. It's a principle of the kingdom. Is a principle of the kingdom. Rather than fight what you don't know, ask questions. Ask questions. We've written material about that. Ask questions. How you ask questions will define your breakthrough in life. Go to people. Change how you think, how you reason. Don't limit your thoughts. Don't limit your thinking. Don't be like them. You are not like them. If anyone be in Christ, that is the place you want to be. Not with them. Not how they think, not how they think, not how they reason. If anyone be in Christ, regardless of where they come from, you understand? Those who are in Christ are my brethren. Jesus said, Amen. These are my brethren. You know, they said to Jesus, Your mother is looking for you. He said, Who is my mother? Do you think Amen? That statement was to, you know, disregard the mother. No, he wouldn't disrespect his mother, but he's showing something. You see, that's why you've got to follow Jesus when he speaks. You see, when you when Jesus says something, there are a thousand and one things that he's saying in the statement, and you have to be in the spirit to pick what he says, or else you will run with what Jesus said and you will misrepresent him. They say, your mother's here looking for you. While he was preaching in the house, he, first of all, he expected his mother, his mother to be at the forefront, to be in the first row of that, you know, of that meeting. Where was his mother? She was outside. Maybe she went doing something else. But they said, oh, your mother's looking for you. So Jesus said, oh, I'm sure my mother is not expecting me to get up from this meeting, all right, to go attend to her outside. You understand? We have to balance this, this, this gospel that we are preaching. Because if we don't balance the gospel, we will, we will overstretch one truth and that truth becomes an error. Like I will hear, you know, some people will say, well, you understand, you know, God wants us to take care of our family first before we take care of, you know, you know the, the things of God, the gospel. That is a lie. That's not true. If your family is established on the principles and the values of God, you don't have to be struggling between amen, which one to which one to take first. You don't have to be struggling between amen, your wife or your or, or Christ. No, somebody says, No, uh, you, you, you love me more than Christ, you love me more than the gospel. That is a false belief. My my love and allegiance first is to God before any any person, before my children, before my wife, before my community, amen, before my family, or before my nation. You see, all of these things that we're seeing going on right now in America is because amen, American church has been built around a nationalistic idea. It's crumbling, it's falling down. 
The same way we've preached a nationalistic you know, gospel, we've also preached amen, a family gospel. We pervert the truth. That's the spirit of the Pharisee. The fact that people have perverted one truth does not mean that that truth, hallelujah, should not be proclaimed and declared in a state of balance. You see, this is what doctrine is all about. Because listen to this, if I don't have a knowledge of the word of God and I'm claiming, oh, I want, I'm loving my family, I'm loving my family, may well, I'm only doing that, amen, to compromise my state, my position in the truth. Who is going to benefit at the end of the day is the devil, not, amen. That's why you see a lot of pastors, their home is in shambles. Because they're trying to invest, they're trying to do everything, all right? But the foundation of Christ and truth that ought to save, that ought to deliver that home, is not there. Sometimes you have to stand and fight that devil in the home and cast out that spirit in the life of that man or woman, hallelujah, that you call a wife or husband for your home to be free on the life of those children. Let nobody put you in a position of asking you to choose all right, between Christ and, and, you know, and your spouse. It's, it is wrong. It is not the gospel of the kingdom. If you have Christ in your life, you will love your home. You will love your people. If anyone be in Christ, you see, when you preach truth from a position of being in Christ... The topography changes. The landscape changes. The values changes. The framework of that truth changes. But if you try to appease, you try to appease people, amen, outside a position in Christ, you will never have enough. In fact, what you give will never be enough. They are going to ask for more until you give everything that you have and they will still not be satisfied because that is a wrong gospel. That's why it's important that we understand the gospel of the kingdom. When we understand the gospel of the kingdom, we know that everything is sourced from the kingdom, including our own life, including the grace to love, to give, amen, to forgive. It flows from that understanding we have in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. How are we doing with time? All right. So Jesus said to Nicodemus, and let's go back to verse 2 again. The Bible says he came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher who came from God. For no one could perform the miracle, the, the, the miraculous signs you are doing if God is not with him. In reply, Jesus declared. I mean, that's a straight question that Jesus is supposed to answer to directly. You see, that's how religious people do. They take a scripture, they take something that sounds good, that sounds important. But if you are not discerning, if you don't have a prophetic understanding to discern the heart of people, you will follow them and you will plunge yourself into a religious argument, into, you know, a spiritual argument. Or you're trying to prove a point. Jesus did not affirm what he said. Jesus did not reject what he said. But Jesus shifted his attention from that. What he said was right. He's a teacher who is performing miracle and they need that. And they say, we know it. So what's the problem? Finish. No, Jesus said it's not over. I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. Jesus just, you know, basically washed off the things he just said. I mean, in my own natural human sense, I would have thought, well, I mean, th th that's a good affirmation, Jesus. I would have thought you should affirm what this man have said. This is a rabbi. This is an important man. You got to understand this. This is an important man who came to Jesus in the night. This is not just any kind of, this is like, you know, some very, you know, high, high ranking, you know, uh, uh, position. I mean, we can even say this is like, you know, uh, 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 um, let's say the, the, the vice president, you know, coming to visit you. And you look straight into his heart. Do we have such grace and capacity and understanding that when people come into our life, that we, we hear beyond what they're saying. We hear what, we, we hear more than what their mouth is saying. Of course, that's how I counsel people. I allow you to say what you want to say, but while you're speaking, I'm, I'm listening to the things you're not saying. And in my response, I want to respond to the things that are truly bothering your heart. And I guess that's what has made me or a, you know, a, a kind of someone that people want to relate to, want to talk to, because at the end of the day, you cannot hide. 
Because we like to hide behind words. We like to, you know, deceive ourselves. We say things, all right, just to cover up the real reason that we <laughs> that we're there. I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God. In other words, Jesus said, Nicodemus, you know your problem is you're not in the kingdom yet. You're a rabbi of the Jewish council. You guys are the highest of the religious sect of the day. You're the Pharisee of the Pharisee. You've read the Torah. You've, no, you've, no, you've read the law and the prophet. Remember, we, we read Luke 16, 16. Yeah. The law and the prophet were until John. These people have lived their life century upon century, proclaiming and declaring the same thing. They've, they've perfected their religious belief. Jesus came, amen, and just put, he just put an end to it just in one statement. You're not in the kingdom. So what you're saying, amen, does not represent the truth. Nicodemus, verily, verily, truly, truly, I tell you, except you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom. I said this to us in our last teaching and the previous one, that the first thing we encounter when we come to the kingdom is a recalibration of our sight. Because you cannot talk about a kingdom that you have not seen. Many of us have tried to represent a kingdom we are totally ignorant of. We talk about the kingdom we read about. We talk about the kingdom all right, that people told us about. But not a kingdom we've experienced. To experience the kingdom of God, you have to be in Christ. In Christ, your eyes get to be open. Because in Christ, amen, you begin to see what the Lord will have you to see. What the Lord, amen, has kept secret. What the Lord, amen, has kept in stock for you. You, you know, have you watched those, some of those movies where you get to a certain place and everything looks airy, dry, you know, barren, nothing. And suddenly, as you move further, you begin to see the, f the fog, you know, disappear. And there you are in the valley. There's a whole city, a whole kingdom. And everything is looking green, lush, beautiful. Where you're coming from to what you're seeing has no comparison. That's how the kingdom of God is. Where you're coming from, you can never, you will never be able to comprehend what you're going to see. What you're going to see when you give your heart, when you give your life, when they open your spiritual eyes. No one gets to see the things of the Spirit of God without going through Jesus the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus being the way, the truth, and the life is to expose you to a dimension of a life, a reality. When you see the kingdom of God, the way you see yourself will change. The way you see your world will change. The way you see the gospel will change. The way you see, amen, the things of the world will change. The way you look at life, understand life will change. This is the message. At least the foundation. From this point of sight, aha, we can then begin to engage realities and realms in the kingdom. We can then begin to talk about uh, what the kingdom of God is. Talk about the administration, the power. All right? I told us some time ago, all right, that you know every kingdom has got their own, if you will, their own sphere of life and administration. The things that you need to know, the things you need to, you see, the fact that you have seen it does not mean that you have beginning to experience every dimension. So sight is the first thing. Don't let nobody deceive you. Whatever you have heard preach about the kingdom of God, hallelujah, begins from, if I mean, Jesus said a lot of things about the kingdom of God. But this point, you see, that is the work of a teacher. A work, amen, of a prophetic teacher is to look for, amen, the beginning, the foundation of a truth, of a revelation, and then build up from that. That's what I've done. Anything we preach that is the kingdom that does not begin from this point will not lead us to the right position of authority and power 
and government in representing the kingdom of God. Because that's what we want to do. All right? Because to, 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 to be able to engage the kingdoms that are rising in this day, you must have sight to see the kingdom of God. Because it's from that sight, amen, that you have the authority, the power, amen, to engage, like I said, because David has seen his position in the kingdom, he was able to charge against, hallelujah, uh, you know, a, 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 an entity, a spirit, amen, that is, that, that is causing the, the most powerful men to hide. I mean, not even his own brothers could challenge, could stand, amen, this, this beast of a Goliath of a pig. Now the king, hallelujah, they, they were all in hiding, they were all running. Even with the promise of the king, Whoever defeats this giant will marry my daughter. <laughs> Nobody. Because they know what that means. In other words, first of all, you're not going to pay, you know, uh, 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 um, you're not going to pay tribute again. You're not going to pay, you know, uh, tax again. You're exempted from tax. I mean, you, you become free. Everything that you do, because you, you, I mean, you're married into royalty. Not even with that kind of, you know, uh, 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 wonderful you know credential that anybody was willing to risk their life David came piece of cake that didn't happen because yes piece of cake that happened because he knew something that the rest of the people don't know that happened because David knew something that the rest of the people the rest of the nation do not know let's put it that way David knew something that the rest of the nation let me ask you a question. What do you know today that the rest of the people don't know? What do you know about God? What do you know about his ways, his kingdom, that the rest of the people don't know? It is what you know that will give you, you see, what I knew, what I knew about the kingdom of God said to me, you can leave your country and you go to a country that you don't know and you can establish the will of God. You see, You can't explain that. Did I tell you guys that when I came to this nation, the person that was supposed to assist me, that we have given money to get me a place and all of that to, so that I can have a start. He just went with the money. He, he ran away. The plan was for me, I mean, to go back to my country because I don't have a place to stay. But I was determined. I call friends that I knew from Nigeria, people that, in fact, one of the people I used to support his ministry. We used to support, our ministry used to support his ministry. He's been based here in South Africa. He's a man of God, pastor. He could not house me. Please, could you come bail me out? Just get me out of this BNB. Because uh, uh, this guy is not sh showing up. It was all doom and gloom. It was like, I have to go back to Nigeria. But I was determined. God sent me to this nation. There will be obstacles. The fact that there are obstacles, obstacles doesn't mean that you did not hear. In fact, the more you heard God, the more there's going to be challenge because people have this idea that when they hear God, everything must just be nice and smooth. No! The enemy is not going to fold his hand and say, carry on. Carry on. There's no house. There's no place for me to stay. Somebody that I met for the first time in Nigeria, an Indian brother, I met for the first time in Nigeria. His name is Sydney. I had to call Sydney and say, Sydney, I'm in trouble. It wasn't my plan to call him because arrangement has been made. We have been planning amen, to come to this nation for years. I've been planning it. I've been planning it. So all my plans earlier were, were watertight, I assume. <laughs> my plans were watertight. I had enough money. I sold my cars and so sold everything that I, I mean, I was ready to come take this nation. But my first contact, he goofed, he messed up. He messed up. But see, God sent me. I knew God sent me to South Africa. I was too sure of that. That's why before you do anything, you have to be sure. Listen to this. Your assurance does not come by the promises of men. When your assurance comes because men promise you, they, God will make sure they fail you. Your assurance must come from a Noah. That's why I say the kingdom of God must take place. Something on the inside of you must be certain. You must be sure. I was sure. There's no turning back. 
When I left Nigeria, I knew there's no turning back. But guess what? I didn't leave Nigeria because I was distressed. I was hungry. I was, you know, you know, looking for a better life. No, 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 no. I was very okay in my country. I, was, I wasn't a rich pastor, but I was okay. I, I can eat whatever I want to eat. I can go to anywhere I want to go, either by flight or, or by road. I had everything that I needed. I wasn't struggling to pay my rent. Because people think when you come to this to other country, you know, they think, no, you, you're just, you know, an economic migrant. That's why I tell people, I'm not an economic migrant. I'm a voice. I've, I've been sent here to bring deliverance. A vision appear in the night. Come to South Africa. South Africa needs engineers. I've come to fix the broken walls and the burn gates of a nation crying for help. There are people crying in this nation that we don't hear their voice except they open your spiritual ears, except they open their spiritual eyes to see the cry, the cry of this nation, the cry of the young people. A young man said to me, come over to South Africa. South Africa needs engineers. I said, but I'm not an engineer. <laughs> As if that was enough. And I had all the revelation and the vision. I told you, I've explained this. So I'm not here to take anybody's church. I'm not here to take anybody's ministry. I'm here because I was sent. I'm on a mandate to fix, to repair. And since, amen, the Lord said to me, go to the Lordship of the house of Israel. That's why we are hammering, amen, this gospel first to fix the church. Because when you fix the church, you fix the nation. When you fix the leader, hallelujah, of the church, you fix the nation. We understand what God is doing. And we're seeing, we've seen changes. We'll continue to see change. We'll continue to pray, amen, that the will of God be done in this nation. And from this nation, we are, we are reaching the nations. Nations that I could not reach in Nigeria just by relocating in obedience. We've reached. We're still reaching more nations. We believe in God this year that God will help us. We want to, we want to, I want to change, I want to transform this studio to become a state of the earth studio so the gospel of the kingdom can continue to penetrate into nations. We want to reach Arabia. We want to reach the Far East. We want to reach Hallelujah. Amen. The Caribbeans, the islands. We want to reach Europe. We want to reach the nations. From this place, we are building Hallelujah, the mountain of the house of the Lord. From this place, the mountain of the Lord is being established. As we bring healing and deliverance to the nation, as we reconstruct, amen, that which is shattered and broken. You see, you can't be looking at what politicians are doing and you think you're going to be motivated. No, you have to, you have to constantly connect to the greed, to the life, hallelujah, to the, to the spirit of that which sent you. I'm a sent one. I'm a sent one. I'm a sent one. I'm a sent one. And my assignment is kingdom. My assignment is within the context of the kingdom. You see? That's a powerful man that came to Jesus. Jesus looked straight into his soul. When you are doing business, your business should be focused on redemption of people. Not about money. Every business has got an agenda. Including Google. You see what the Googles of this world are doing. You see what the apples, the, what the, what the, you know, uh, 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 you know the, yes, the apples of this world. What the, you know, uh, uh, the Microsofts of this world. You see, now we are beginning to know their true color. They are not just there to make money. All right? There is an agenda behind, behind the money. All right? They have a political affiliation. They have a political philosophy that they are promoting. And it's becoming clear. If it's not becoming clearer, listen, they will not shut one man down because they do not agree, amen, with his values. They do not agree, amen, with, with, his, with, his, with his ideology of, 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 you know, of politics. The fact that, hallelujah, Donald Trump and the rest of them do not agree. You should not shut him down, Google. You should not. When business become an instrument to promote, you know, an agenda, it's no longer business as we define business. I, I've been saying that to people. I say, there are kingdoms rising up. These are part of what I'm saying. There are kingdoms rising up. Amen. Google is a kingdom. Hardly, hardly can you do anything today without amen, connecting to Google. Uh, who, who's doing any search that you're not going to? Every word you type, amen, on that Google search engine, amen, is stored somewhere. 
Nobody's free. Nobody's saved. Amen. There, there is nothing like, all right, you, you've got freedom. No. Wait until you challenge what they stand for. They will use amen, what you have searched, what who you think you are. They will use it to, amen, to fight you. We are not afraid to say these things because the Lord is our defense. The Lord is the one fighting for us. They should hear and they should know. All right. It's, if you say it's democracy, you should let every idea and opinion, amen, you know, stand. Put it on the table. That's what democracy ought to be. But today it's no longer so, amen. It's, 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 it's a council culture. If you don't agree with what we agree with, if you don't believe in what we agree, because we have the money, we have the influence, we cut the plug. Don't do that. You're destroying the world. You want to raise anarchy people, because people are going to rise up and do their own thing. Let's not do that. Let's proclaim liberty and freedom. Hallelujah. It's the truth. And only the truth will set us free. If you're going to die for anything, die standing for the truth. Don't die. Because listen, there is life after death. Jesus told us, don't be afraid of those that can just kill you. And that's all. And that's all they can do. When you kill this flesh, listen to this. There's another life that you cannot kill. And that is a life that we subscribe to. There's a dimension of a life that we live that is beyond this one that you can see. There's a realm that we are prayed from that is beyond what you can touch. Let's rise up. Let's identify who we are. And that's why Jesus is saying, Nicodemus, I love you so much to tell you the truth. I love the things you've said. I acknowledge the fact that you acknowledge that you guys acknowledge that I'm a teacher and I've come from God and I've done all these miracles to help the people. But guess what? That is not what I'm about. I'm about you, Nicodemus. Except you be born again. You cannot see salvation, amen, is the opening of your sight to the eternal intentions of the Father for your life. Nicodemus, give your heart so you can see. You can see the true meaning of things. You can see what is behind that situation. You can see what, what, what the enemy is trying to do that he has kept you and your family for ages, for centuries, amen, in darkness. Give your heart so you can see. Come on. Lord, we thank you. What a place to stop this morning. What a truth. What a, what a, what a word. What a liberating word. We honor you. We celebrate you, Father. Your will is our command. Open our eyes. Open my eyes. There are things that we initially see, yet there are things we have not seen yet. You say, eyes have not seen it. Ears have not heard it. The mind of man has not come to comprehend these things that you have ordained for those who love you. To see, hallelujah, means to have a blepo, a blepo. You know, there are different Greek words and Hebrew words that mean several things in the scripture. But this particular, this to, excuse me, this particular word, amen, is beyond just to to, to, to shazar, to blepo. This word actually means to ido. To ido. To ido. The word ido. E-I-D-O. Ido. They, says, they said it's a primary verb. Use only. Not every time. Use only. There are several, like I said, there are several meanings for the word sight to see. But this particular one, ido, amen, listen to this, is used only for certain past tenses. And what does this word mean? To have a proper sight. To have to see things properly. To see things. Not just to see, but to have a true meaning of what, hallelujah, you have seen. You see, you can see things and say, well, that's a car. You know, you can identify. But to know the meaning of what you have identified, you need to, be, you need to have Edo. This is what Jesus is asking, amen, Nicodemus to come into. Nicodemus had a sight of who Jesus is. And that sight was good. But that sight was, amen, was a partial sight. 
<laughs> was a partial sight. He said, we know. You are a teacher who came from God. How did they know that? Because anyone who does not go through the school of the rabbis, amen, cannot teach. So they acknowledged that Jesus did not, amen, attend their school. But he knew something. At the age of 12, amen, he taught them. <laughs> Edo. To properly see. By implication, to perfectly see things. To perfectly know things. To be aware of things perfectly. To behold things. Amen. To scan things and see them the way they are. To understand the edge, the width, the length, the breadth, the height of things. Ido. Lord, we thank you. We honor you. We glorify your name. Thank you for your will and counsel and purpose. Thank you, Father, for your desire. Thank you, Father, for your mind. Thank you, Father, that our, our, our understanding will be open to see these things. Many of us will have to go back and check if indeed we are truly saved. There were people who were following John for 20, 22 years after. They met Paul and Paul said, have you guys received the spirit, the Holy Spirit since you believe? They said, we've not even heard anything such like that. So we can religiously be engaged in the things of God, around the things of God and still not have that foundational truth. So we pray this morning that there will be clarity of sight, that there will be clarity of wisdom, clarity of understanding. We honor you, O oh God. We thank you for your will and purposes establishing our life thank you for that for everyone who has joined who has listened who has been part of this broadcast i pray that they will come to this either point sight will be given to them understanding clarity will be given to them that we will all see things so that when we say we are not afraid we mean what we say when we say we are advancing we are breaking through we are going forth we know what we are talking about we thank you. And if there's anyone out there who needs to be born again, I pray that they will give their life to you because indeed that brings them to a point where they become a new creation. All things. is in salvation that we come to acknowledge and embrace that all things have passed away. All things in our life. The things we have done in the past. You acknowledge them. You recognize them as old and pass you say behold all things become new so i thank you oh god this day that there will be an embracing and a, an expression of the new new we have we have held on to old religions old standards oh god we now we want to come to the new we want to embrace the new if any man is in christ he's a new creation all things are passed away behold all things become new is a position, a condition of life, a, a philosophy of lifestyle, a tradition, a culture of the newness that we share in Christ. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, everyone, this morning. I really do appreciate everyone that has joined us, that have been part of this live broadcast. Wow, what a word this morning. What an impression. What a declaration. What an imprint of the Spirit. I want to pray that every word that amen, has been proclaimed this morning, that you will not just, amen, after this broadcast, just forget about it. I pray that you will go back amen, and search again and look again amen, and reconsider this basic you know, uh, principles, but yet so profound a word amen, that will change our life. I want to pray that you will not amen, give up, that you will not give in, but that you continue to pray, Lord, open my eyes i i give my heart even if you have given your heart pray that prayer again lord i give because now you have a better understanding of what it means to be saved you're safe to see the kingdom of god you're not just safe to go to heaven heaven comes down heaven abides in your life now you have become one with heaven do you understand that you've become one you've become joint hair with christ you can't be here with christ and not be one with heaven heaven is basically a place of administration just like we say the kingdom is a place of administration 
Let's not run after an administration or position of power when our relationship and intimacy in Christ, amen, is not secure. So thank you so much, everyone, this morning that, amen, have joined us. Thank you, my dear sister, again, Sister Kumisa, Sister Tina, and uh, any other person out there, all right, we've asked people to, you know, to subscribe to, you know, to our site so that, all right, they can also join our live chat please you can join our live chat all right we, we i'm not sure if i'm not doing something right here but we only have two people join our live chat we want more people to join our live chat so i can see what you're posting and then we can appreciate you but all right we want to thank god for what the lord amen has done today in our life thank you everyone we bless the lord for amen your input continue to watch continue to listen and continue to stand tall continue to advance in the light of god's will and of course please continue to pray for me i need all your prayer particularly with this teaching that we're doing right the enemy is really fighting us but the grace of god amen is sufficient for us and we'll always overcome so thank you please share this link share this message somebody needs to listen to this somebody needs to hear this put it out there all right let the people know the truth is coming to us to bring freedom and liberation have yourself a wonderful prosperous day god bless you bye bye